Okay, talking to the camera again. The bit I don't like. It's late here, it's like half ten at night. I'm full of Chinese food, a little bit of wine. Touch of the man flu. I hate talking to the camera, I just hate doing this. Weather's been nasty here. Uh, the jet stream is just aimed straight at the UK and it is dumping all the crap from the Atlantic on us. One after the other after the other. We get like a few hours in between wind uh, where it's calm, where there's a, a like a high pressure and then pff, straight into another low pressure. So I've got to do this tonight because tomorrow morning is one of these calm times for maybe two hours I think between 9 and 10 a.m. and I want to get up for a quick flight, uh, a test flight which I'll talk about in a second. So I've got a couple of things first. These are the pumpkin bags from Tony Fofangers over in the States, NCPPG, link up there. They fold up really small, they're wing bags, they're really tough, really well made. Thanks Tony for, I know how hard you work to get this sorted. Integral riser bag. Nice tough wing bag. Mine is going to be, he says it's tough enough to use as your everyday bag. Uh, mine's going to be hidden away inside my harness for emergencies like, you know, if your uh, car rubber's fallen to bits and you have to do an emergency landing on a football field and then walk half a mile with your wing. Easier to have it in one of these. So, everybody who wanted one has paid and has got one on the way apart from Adam Aves in a YouTube comment and Henry Simons Jones or Simmons Jones get in touch and we'll get you sorted I've got one left if anybody wants one 48 pounds and I'll pay the posters to get it to you or I'll be at the PMC spring bore okay so that's that done second one is and this is gonna be awesome This has been sorted out by my sponsors, uh, paramotortraining.com. Link in the description, link here. Um, Paramotor Training in Swindon, UK. Get you through. Training takes between five and nine days on average. Don't let anyone else tell you different. Uh, and this is, it's kind of a shame this is, but it's awesome as well. Can you guess what it is yet? It's been a long time coming. One Icaro Scarab. Bear with. One Icaro Scarab in lovely carbon fibre with the Microavionics Paramotor 100. Let's just try this on for size. Oh yes. Do these clip out? Yeah. Ooh. Nice. Comfy, warm, proper communications. Uh, that goes to a two meter radio, I think, or any radio. I'm not sure what this is. And I need to speak to Microavionics about a line out uh, to my GoPro and then work out where my GoPro is going to go. But that is sexy. Thank you very much to ParamotorTraining.com and the guys down there. It's, it's been a long time coming, but it's, it's going to be a shame to retire the old Mark 3, 4, 7, I can't remember. Um, which has been a lot of fun, but very heavy. Yeah, very heavy. Uh, not comfortable, but I put this together before I'd even started training. I don't think I'd even booked training when I got hold of this and started tearing it to bits and sticking stuff to it and drilling holes in it. Uh, so I think I'm going to retire it and stick it on the wall up there. But first of all I need to take some stuff off and work out how this microavionics works. Lots of settings. 
Yeah, I've not used one of these at all apart from when I was on a tandem with Clive Mason and uh, he had us connected directly together and it worked very well so I'm hoping that this will solve a lot of communication problems, make things clearer for you and me and more comfortable and warmer and that visor is the dog's tits. So once again paramotortraining.com link here um, if you are a noob, and I know there's a bunch of you that watch these videos, get on the website, give Simon a ring, get down there with Simon and Colin, get your training done, get in the sky. Okay, I hate talking to the camera. I just hate talking to the camera. Right, I need to do a test flight tomorrow. I've had this oil problem. Let's go over there and I'll explain it with the old Osmo. Okay, one Bailey V5S. Here's a nice new car, brother. Thanks Lee Leach, sorting that out. Right, okay, what am, I do what am I doing? I've ordered some new bits. I've got a new air filter on the way. I've got a new fuel pump on the way for no reason at all really. Uh, another primer bulb because this one's starting to show some cracks just here. So uh, that's here. Oil filters, I've got lots of oil filters. I tried to fit one of those in before. And it was about one millimeter too big. You couldn't quite, couldn't quite get this cover back on. So we wait to see what happens. I've got some new Tigon tubing to replace as well, and it should all look sexy when it's done. So the oil problem is, uh, I was getting back from flights, and there's oil everywhere. You can see it here. It's literally just after every flight. This is all caked. And first of all, I thought it was an oil leak. You might remember at the um, autumn boar meet, we had it in bits trying to find out where the oil was coming from. And it turns out that it's coming out of this breather tube. Well, not this one. This one is normally attached on here. And it runs down the back there, if you can see, and disappears inside this hollow leg. It runs down inside to the bottom here and it's slowly filling this up until it started wicking out of this little screw hole here onto my harness. So I drilled a tiny little hole in the bottom and all the oil that was in there all poured out into a jug and I caught it. And that was, that was problem solved really until it started kicking oil out and coming in here and throughout the flight just oil pissing out of here, propeller, giant fan blowing it all round. I spoke to someone else and they said put a screw in there um, and then every now and again just drain it out which is a way of dealing with it um, but I never did take the screw out and then at some point this must have filled up above the level of that tube that dangles down inside because after a flight at Winglands the other day there was oil everywhere in here it was all over the back of the harness it was everywhere uh, and I think this tube had become blocked at the other end with oil. I don't think that this whole thing was full, but I don't know. I don't know what had happened. So I uh, spoke to Lee again. Lee's a mechanic friend of mine. He says, run the pipe upwards, then whatever goes into the pipe will run back down into the head, which is true. And I spoke to someone else who said it's due to full throttle at launch and cold oil getting chucked around. There's a baffle inside this inside this rocker cover um, but stuff's get past it so what I've got set up here is um, another little stunt breather tube that runs down here to this bottle and then looking at that bottle I've got a little camera here so I'm gonna go for a flight tomorrow and I should be able to see when the oil goes into this bottle and how much uh, hopefully it will prove to be true that it comes out during launch and that if I just warm up the engine properly, then the thinner oil won't get chucked out there. That's one suggestion that somebody made. At some point, this pipe's got to be rerouted and go up so that anything that does go into the pipe goes back into the head. I've just seen some pictures tonight of um, the later Baileys, like fairly late, very recent Baileys. This pipe is rerouted round the back of the carb and straight into the end of the air filter. And um, 
Lee pointed that out and he said that's the way most cars work apparently and any oil that does come out of there any fumes or whatever that makes it all the way around here and then uphill into this gets blasted back through the carb uh, and it shouldn't be much because it's going uphill and most of it is running back into the rocker cover head down here so we wait to see hopefully the second half of this video is a flight let's all pray that this camera and it's Heath Robinson selection of brackets don't come loose and go through the prop and get minced up uh, go for a quick flight see what's happening ideal situation is it proves true that this comes out of a cold motor and just warming it up properly will stop it but again i fly with nigel and he's pretty much the same launch as me and warm up and everything in fact i learned from him so i do the same thing and his engine doesn't do it his breather tube is as clean as this it's like brand new tube you, there's not even a mark on it so hopefully hopefully all comes in here on launch and then i know what's happening i'd know just to warm it up and then once that's done i reroute this pipe back round, drill a hole in the top of the air filter and have it coming in there so there we go hopefully camera spin dink 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 anyway that's that um adam aves henry jones get in touch that's it hopefully we're going flying now <clears throat> Right, it's really windy down here, too windy for me, but I'm going to wait for a lull, try and do a reverse. Not feeling good, I've been down here half an hour just standing around, thinking about going home. So if I do get off the ground, it's just going to be a quick five minute one. <coughs> oh, I've still got the man flu. Yeah, look at that sock. It's busy. Apparently it's 10 gusting 15. Well, that was at 10 o'clock. It's supposed to be quite a bit stronger as the day wears on. Yeah, bloody hell. I'm going to get set up for a reverse and then just stand there and wait. Watch that sock. As soon as it dips a bit, I'm going to give it a go. I just want to go through a launch to see what's going on with this oil. This engine's getting warmed up. Not my usual launch. Come on, let's go for a fly. It's just too strong. I'm just watching that sock. <coughs> Waiting for it to stop flicking. I'm going home. I don't want to go home. Yeah, look at that sock. Subway. Screw it. I don't know what that was. I find a bit of crap in there or something, but it didn't want to tick over. But now it is fine. Rubbish day. Until next time. Well, that was <laughs> stuff for myself. It was nice out at half past eight this morning. What is it now? 20 past 11. I've been down there for about an hour. Not flying. Covered in mud. Kind of just got up and gone out. But no, sat at home thinking I ought to charge this up or do that or I'll just look at this or I'll just have another coffee. Anything to put, put off loading up the car. And I missed the sort of Karma window of the day, and now it's going to be a week before there's no wind again. I'm angry. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do that again. I'm not gonna do that again. So 
it's still got no more knowledge on the oil thing. <clears throat> oh, I was all set up for a reverse. I thought, yeah, let's just do this. Do you know what I mean? The only thing stopping me do a reverse is me. Perfect day for it. Unbelievable. So I set up for a reverse, and then I got some tick over trouble. Maybe I just had a bit of shit in a car or something, I don't know. It was fine after I'd given it a good blast. No oil anyway, but if I had a to if I had a taken off, that engine would have been properly warmed up anyway, so oh. it wouldn't have been the nicest of flights, but it had been a flight. Anyway, let's look on the plus side. I've done a year's worth of videos and I was thinking I'd take my foot off the gas and then I saw a video from Peter McKinnon he's one of the people I follow I'll link it up here but I watched that after a bottle of wine last night and I thought I'll do another year so I think that's what I'll do lots planned just wait for this crappy weather to pass so stand by for some boring videos. <laughs> Doesn't do anything for your confidence a day like that. I've got this 260 mile two day cross country in about four or five weeks. And I'm leaving fields unable to launch. Not ideal. So I'm gonna go home and wait for these mugs to arrive and then that'll be it. Hopefully someone can learn something. I don't know what. Looks like a parcel has arrived. Oh yes. That is pretty good. Come into a tea making facility on a field near you soon. Mm -hmm. 